Bristol is the UK's home of hot air balloons. Every year we have an international balloon fiesta where people from all over the world come to Bristol to fly their hot air balloons. So today we're going to be showing you how to make your own and also finding out how the pros do it and discover where it all started. To make a hot air balloon you need three key things. A balloon, a pilot and some hot air. Today our mission is going to be to get our pipe cleaner pilot to the ceiling of that Bristol. We're going to do it using a big plastic bag. Now the reason for this is not only can it get pretty big, but also the material is light enough to get him up there. But we don't have to worry about his safety. If he falls out of the sky, he's not going to get hurt. But what materials does a real hot air balloon need to be made from to not only withstand the heat that it experiences, but ensure the safety of its human cargo? Cameron Balloons is one of the world's oldest manufacturers of hot air balloons, but they also pride themselves on being fabric engineers. So here I am with Hannah Cameron of Cameron Balloons, and uh, we've got some different fabrics here. So how important is the fabric when it comes to making a hot air balloon? Obviously, most of the balloon that we fly in relies on having really good and um, often very technical fabrics. Um, so we usually use three main types. Um, one is uh, a Nomex. It's the same sort of fabric as you'd use in uh, a racing car driver's suit. It's very heat resistant and it's used around the base of the balloon, um, but it wouldn't actually be that good for holding in the hot air. So what do we need to use instead? So we've got um, a number of other fabrics. We've got this one here, which is our classic ripstop. You can see the grid work in it. It's very light. It weighs less than normal computer paper, for example, about 70 grams per meter square. This feels really light and it's almost, almost transparent. I can see my hand through that Absolutely. material. Absolutely. And it gives a really good glow when you're doing night glows, for example. You, you have the balloons lit up literally like lanterns. But we've also got an extra special fabric here. This one is something that we've developed ourselves. It's known as Hyperlast. This and feels really, really amazing. Different. This is and kind of really smooth and I don't know how got, to describe it. It's got a very slippery coating. Yes. It's very similar to the Teflon that you'd see on your saucepans at home. Um, and if we try, and the reason I've put a slice in it is if you try and rip it, bearing in mind this is just a little bit heavier than your computer paper at oh home, you can see it's, it's really, really, really strong. It's really tough. Don't hurt yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our engineers are quite experts at managing and making these fabrics and specifying the precise ingredients that we want. More interesting as well, so should you manage to drape your balloon over some barbed wire, obviously this is much bigger than normal barbed wire, but um, what we do is you very carefully take it off the, the barbed wire, being careful not to rip it, and then you'd smudge your fabric back into life. And although that's not perfect aesthetically, no. from, from an actual usability and practical point of view, that's completely airworthy because it's not damaged one of the fibres. All it did was push the fibres apart and so all I've done is smudge them back in together. So our materials aren't quite that high tech, but we still need a big enough balloon to get our pilot up to the ceiling. So instead of just using one bin bag, we're going to use two and cut the bottom off of a second one. It's not cutting. <laughs> so a bigger volume of air means that we're going to be able to carry more weight. Now hopefully, by doubling the size of our balloon, we should be able to get our pilot well on his way. So a hot air balloon needs to be big, but just how big? Let's take a look inside this one. <laughs> this is absolutely humongous. And what we can see here is only one sixth of how the final inflated balloon is going to be. So being inside here, it's a little bit like being inside a giant inflatable cathedral. I can't really yeah. comprehend just how big it is inside here. But this is actually a small balloon, is that right? Yeah, this balloon is uh, it's what we call a 105, which means it's, um, the volume is 105,000 cubic feet. Uh, this will carry a pilot plus three or four passengers. Um, but we make balloons, we do a 750, so 750,000 cubic feet, which will carry pilot plus 32 people. So wow. 
So That's yeah, a lot of people. This this big. is this is a small one to us, even though it feels big in here. It's, this is a small balloon, yeah. So we need to attach our cargo, but we also want to make sure the hot air doesn't escape. So we're going to tie some knots into the bottom of our bag. We need to make sure the opening at the bottom of our bag is big enough for the nozzle of our hairdryer. So our basket is just going to be a plastic cup, and we're going to attach that onto our knots using some string. So now we need to pop in our pilot. And then all we need to do is add our hot air. The reason hot air rises is because the air molecules are given more energy. These energetic molecules occupy a greater volume and are less dense. So the hotter, lighter air can float in the cooler air around it. All right, I think we're good to go in three, two, one. Success! <laughs> so our pilot didn't fare too badly on his first voyage, but how did hot air ballooning start here in the UK? Well, we were lucky enough to talk to one of the first true pioneers of hot air ballooning who began his first voyage back in 1967, Mr. Don Cameron. People ask me how I got into ballooning and I, I usually put it down to drink because uh, it was in the bar that a few of us started talking about the new kind of ballooning that had just been started in the States. And we ended up building the first modern hot air balloon in, uh, in this side of the Atlantic. And the first flights we made were, um, they, they were really just little hops. It's very difficult to describe compared to nowadays when it's pretty routine, but it, it did just seem like absolute magic. And uh, we approached it very, very tentatively, of course because uh, we, we didn't know how dangerous this was or, or not. It never loses, loses the magic, because you're, you're, you're just floating in a totally different way from, a, from an aeroplane. You can lean over the edge and actually chat to people on the ground sometimes. You can't do that in an aeroplane. <laughs> Huge thanks go to Cameron Bloons for letting us come film inside their amazing factory. For more science experiments to try at home, why not check out how to measure the speed of light using a bar of chocolate? And for more science every week, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.